Welcome back to the Bloomington Breakfast Club, Hoosiers. I'm Juliana Mary, and I'm back in the studio for season five with my new co-host. That's right, I'm Michael Skiles, and we are so excited for the new ideas, guests, and segments this season will bring. Stay tuned to hear from the student who founded the club that has set out to save the environment one bee at a time. Grab your cup of coffee, Hoosiers. It's gonna be a good morning. It wouldn't be TBBC without the unnecessary updates of the week. Jules, what do you have for us today? So our first update is actually completely necessary because Jamie Lynn Sigler will be the voice of Disney's first Jewish princess. Wow. And I could not be more excited. I'm such a Disney fan and I'm just so excited that they're working on being more inclusive in their brand. Okay, so I looked into that and mm -hmm. sadly it's not gonna be like a standalone movie. So there's this like little TV show for kids called Elena of Avalor, and she's just gonna be like a neighboring princess from a Latino Jewish community. So a, <laughs> a neighboring Jewish princess. Yeah, yeah it's what an even is combo. that? A neighboring princess. Latino like from another Like kingdom. not even the main one. Not even the main one. She's just a side character. You're so kidding me. I thought we were gonna get another Elsa, but I don't know. That's but not as the case. like a fellow Jew, it's kind of nice to see that we're actually gonna get some more of this type of inclusion from Disney. I don't know if they're actually gonna put like some Hebrew in there, like Lachayim, I don't know, but mm -hmm. like, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see, well, I'm excited. Maybe I'll have to watch the children's Disney kids show to actually see what the final product is. Latino yeah. and Why Jewish, <laughs> can, like, cover all your bases, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the Bachelor franchise broadcasted its first ever same-sex couple proposal between Demi Burnett and Kristen Haggerty. So. I think that they are just so adorable together and you could just tell through the show how in love that they were and mm -hmm. their whole story with how she was with Derek and then uh, she came on and ended up staying on in paradise and it's queer baiting. <laughs> it's queer baiting. It really? You think? I totally think so. I mean, they totally led you into this whole false facade, and then they tried to like end it with like an LGBT ending because like woohoo inclusivity. I'm like, if you're gonna do a gay bachelor, just do a gay bachelor. Right. Good point. I mean, it could be. I know that there's been some discussion of having just changing the whole show and just having one that was just for LGBTQ mm -hmm. um, people, and then the having that as being more the dynamic, but. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see where they end up going from this because I think this is a good step in the right direction and we'll see where it continues. But in other Bachelor news, Peter Weber, a.k.a. Pilot Pete, will be the next Bachelor. So are you guys, how do you feel about this? I heard, so I didn't watch the season that Pete was on, Pilot Pete, okay. but I did hear that he was kind of more of a soft kind of guy, just kind mm -hmm. of like nice, like He's gentle. The Good typical bachelor though, that's what they look for, I feel yeah. like. But I'm such a Mike fan, yeah. so I was a little bit disappointed, but. I just don't know if Pete is gonna bring in the ratings or mm -hmm. the drama, just because he didn't really on his season. So I wanna know how he's actually gonna spice things up a little bit. Well, he claims that he's gonna be a little bit more edgier. I know he came out and said that like, you know, I'm gonna be a little bit more of a bad boy this season. But so be yourself. We'll see the effort. Yeah, you gotta be yourself. That's the thing, you know. Yeah. Maybe people like the soft side. Yeah. A pilot Pete. Well, yeah. we will see. I'm sure that Bachelor will find a way to stir things up. But <laughs> Cody Lee, the talented singer who is blind and has autism, won the 14th season of America's Got Talent after going totally viral on every type of social media. I feel like I saw him absolutely everywhere because the impact that he has had on people has been amazing. I mean, his talent is, it, it takes your breath away. It's impressive. It really gives nobody any excuse not to, you know, go right. out and eat, like learn so a musical inspiring. like in instrument. Like to be able to learn piano, which you know is very difficult. I tried learning piano. I've spent years trying to learn piano. I can't play piano to this day. So this guy comes out and he wows everybody. Does an amazing job. And I mean, 
I would buy his album. He comes out with an album, yeah. I'm there. And he's getting a Vegas show, he's getting a mm. million dollars. You know, this is changing not only his life, but his whole family's life. I mean, you saw the emotion on his face and just the pride in his whole family. And like the fact that he can sing a full song and just like feel the, the emotion of it. And like, it like allows him to be free and it's beautiful to see. Right, I think that it's really just changing so many people's lives and inspiring so many in that community and just showing, like you said, th that you can do anything. There's truly no excuse. You'll never, your potential is un endless. And I think that what he stands for is so important in the America's Got Talent community, especially. Right. Mm -hmm. So, Well, I got Asher. some cool something for us today. <laughs> um, some big news, Takashi69 is a rapper scheduled to appear in court yesterday and today, facing up to 47 years in prison for robberies, kidnapping, assault, and drug trafficking. Um, he's accepted a testifying deal from the court. So he was in court yesterday and today, and it's kind of messy because he is being, Snoop Dogg is saying that he's ratting on everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I kind of looked into that a little bit, and he, it's like day three of the trials. By day three, he already, uh, I guess ratted out on like four different people. Mm -hmm. Cardi B is apparently in a gang. It's like called Trey Blues or something. Mm -hmm. So she, we might not see her for a while. Right. Um, She's already gone with all her PR people and said, you know, that's not happening. Mm -hmm. You know, she was never a part of it. Another rapper, Jim Jones, has been said to be part of it. Um, so the court will reevaluate his sentence now that he has said everything, but his family has been told not to come into court actually because they're scared because quote unquote snitches get stitches. Yeah. That's oh my dangerous. gosh. Well, yeah. that sounds like a very scary situation. And I just, I wonder how much of all of this will actually come out to be true because mm -hmm. I know that in these situations, the intentions are, aren't always pure. So mm -hmm. we'll see. I mean, the tea is being spilled. This is really going to unveil some things that most people probably don't know. So we will see. Yeah. For years here at Indiana University, Sports like basketball and football have reigned supreme, both in recognition and fan base. But 16 miles outside of IU's campus, there is an unlikely sports team that takes the field, or should I say the waters, for competition. For this week's Jack on the Street, I'm taking you out to Lake Lemon for a look at the IU Bass Fishing Club. Beginning competition in sync with the sun rising, the IU Bass Fishing Club enters the waters of Lake Lemon at 6.45 in the morning. After unloading their boats and equipment into the water, the team travels across the lake at full speed in pairs or trios, with one goal in mind, to catch bass. The team is not looking for just any bass, as size matters in the sport. Rules require the fish to be 14 inches in length, and the weight of the fish is all part of the sport itself. Winners are awarded for the combined weight of their top five bass caught throughout the day. IU undergraduate students from all backgrounds make up this organization and share one desire, the love of being out on the water and catching fish. Oh, don't, don't let him get away. And catching fish is just what they did out in the waters of Lake Lemon. IU student Trevor McDaniel shares his catches of the day. Got a couple of pound and a half, maybe two pounders there and that one that flopped away, but yeah, we caught them this morning. We caught a few of them. Oh. The success of the team and ability to catch bass, in large measure, comes from the founding father of collegiate bass fishing, former IU professor Steve Lutz, who established the first ever collegiate level bass fishing club in 1987. ESPN covers uh, the, the college bass circuit and uh, there's been uh, articles in the New York Times about uh, collegiate bass fishing. And uh, it's, it's all over the United States now, I'm happy to say. And we started right here at, at IU, and I started with eight kids, and uh, I'm very proud of that. Lutz isn't the only proud fisherman. After a long day on the water, smiles shine on land as members show off their catch and weigh in their bass. <laughs> the bass fishing team begins a season of competition against other colleges that begin this month. Reporting from the waters of Lake Lemon in Unionville, for the Bloomington Breakfast Club, I'm Jack Bassett. Joining us in the studio this morning, we have the president of the Beekeepers of IU Club, Jake Everick and Isaac Almack. Welcome in, guys. Thank you so much for, Thanks having, for having us. us. Yeah. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Glad you're here. So the first question that I want to know is, what has been your inspiration through bringing the Beekeeping Club back to IU? Because it was here, and then you guys were able to bring it back. So can you kind of walk me through that? Sure. So 
last year I was going through Be Involved, which is how a lot of freshmen, sophomores really get to understand like what kind of clubs are on campus, what the offerings are. So I was just scrolling through there and I saw the Frozen Beekeeping Club at IU page and uh, I just started inquiring about it. I reached out to the people who were linked on the page. Um, Ellie Symes, who's the original founder and first president of the club, uh, reached out to her, talked to her, connected with some other professors at IU, and I roped in some, uh, some of my buddies, including Isaac, uh, just to help with the workload. But last year we spent a lot of time just trying to build this club so that people had a way to be outdoors, build things, interact with something really cool like bees, and hopefully, um, you know, learn a little something too. So we wanted to give all students at IU a chance to learn more about bees and spend time with them. So that's our main motivation, I'd say. Okay, so there's, there's a lot of urgency associated with bees. A lot of people are freaking out, saying, you know, the world's gonna end, you know, all entire ec or ecosystems could like be destroyed. Um, why, why suddenly is, everybody like so concerned about it why should we protect the bees now more than ever well now more than ever i mean it seems like there's kind of a lot of polarization at least from what jake and i saw like with just the environment and everything and we thought the one big thing that can bring people together is bees because it seems like it's just really easy to get people around that idea of saving them and education i mean b movie helps a lot yeah. so there's <laughs> that <laughs> but i mean it was mainly just like we noticed that we needed something easy to get people's minds around working in that environmental sense because it is an issue that we got kind of got to tackle yeah. very cool and what can the bloomington community do to protect the honeybee population here well i think one of the first ways is just to learn a little something about bees and the current you know state of affairs they're in so some really easy ways to do that, obviously for students on campus, you sh should join Beekeeping Club at IU, but also adults in the community, there's, there's some other great clubs in counties surrounding the area, and also the Bee Town Bee Club, which is, um, you know, they run literally, they meet on Kirkwood, and it's for adults or kids, anyone who wants to learn more. So I'd say probably the first big piece is learning something about, you know, why colony collapse disorder is such a, a real risk and like you mentioned understand the urgency behind it so I think if people can just become advocates for saving the bees in some small way that's that's an easy way to get going and get started on helping out the population yeah. so beekeeping looks like a lot of fun uh, from the outside I mean you guys got these really cool outfits <laughs> you get to like go and have fun with bees I guess and you know get their honey and really interact with them so what do you enjoy most about beekeeping I'd say so far it's the people we've met from the call-out meetings you know me, Jake and I were talking before the club was started and we really wanted to make it a club where any talent you had you could do something in beekeeping good you could make apparel you could work on finances or uh, whatever but I mean that you know 15 20 people stopped after our meeting and was like I have 50 ideas for leadership that I want to get down with you guys so I'd say so far it's the it's the urgency and the club members that we have like wanting to get stuff done right away and not later yeah it is really impressive especially to see the freshmen being so motivated to yeah. jump into leadership roles or take on big you know jobs and come up with creative solutions to helping out the club so I think that's been the most impressive uh, thing we've seen so far and definitely something that made me the most happy. Yeah. yeah. And I understand you guys had a pretty big turnout for the club <laughs> call out meeting, right? Yeah. Yep. How um, many people? Yeah, well, we, we spent a day in Dun Meadow kind of advertising the club and just through word of mouth, we were able to get over 100 people to be there at our first call out meeting. So it was, it was pretty crazy yeah. walking into the IMU not knowing what to expect and just seeing like a packed room uh, and then it turned into standing room only so it kind of felt like I felt like it was our own little wow. concert or like rock yeah. show or something yeah. no, you made it. it was really <laughs> exactly awesome. that's yeah. wow. that was so encouraging awesome. so so with all these new members what are your future plans for the beekeeping club and where do you see it going what are members doing sure I'd say in the immediate future of the club first of all we're gonna have to find a way to organize 100 people into like tasks for task force and get them out there working on things so we have plenty of areas uh, we definitely need to improve on as far as making a structure for people um, I think 
definitely seeing the large number was a little overwhelming at first, but you know, we now know we have capable numbers of people to get the jobs done. So I'd say moving forward, at least um, us as upperclassmen, really within the next two years, leaving the club in a place where it can carry on when we're off campus and continue to educate the community and actually get in there and get some honey and beeswax yeah. out of the hives. Exactly. So. Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. I'll be looking forward to seeing it. And then you guys brought some stuff in. Do you guys want to tell mm -hmm. us about what, what all of this is? <laughs> yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's basically everything that we found at Hilltop Gardens that we have left. So we've got the, uh, the helmets to protect yourselves. We've got some of the panels that the combs run. We have the smoker here, too. Okay. Yeah. Cool. How does the cool. smoker work? Is that like a, sure. is that a, like pad or something? Yeah, so yes. basically like, I'd, I won't squeeze it here because it might throw <laughs> pine saw yeah. everywhere, yeah. but yeah. basically you burn pine saw in so here. you can kind of see inside, it's like all burnt. Oh, okay. oh wow, yeah. And it's like a lot yeah. of so in B right. movie, it makes it look like they're killing the bees, but it's, I mean, we learned from our buddy Cole that that's <laughs> completely not the case, that you burn pine saw and you pump the smoke into the hive and it simulates a forest fire. And during a forest fire, what the bees do is they try to vacate the hive, but before that they eat all the honey they possibly can and they go into a food coma. So when they fall asleep, that's literally all it is. You're putting them out so that you can then like safely examine the health of the hive and stuff. Very cool. Well, yeah. we actually got an up close look at the hilltop garden and the hives. So let's take a look. We're here on the scene at Hilltop Garden at IU. We're here with the president of the beekeeping club, Jake Emrick, and he's going to show us what all the buzz is about. Let's do it. Okay, so right now I'm with these guys in the bee garden, which is where bees from all over Hilltop congregate and, you know, dig in on these pollinator friendly flowers. So at the club, we have this really great, about 10 by 30 foot um, little garden area that's really up to us to, you know, see what we want to do with it. Our goal is to just upkeep and maintain this garden so that there is an area for bees from all over to really come find pollen and get back to their hive and make honey and beeswax and stuff. So that's Very really cool. what this area is for. That's awesome. Awesome. Cool. So we are here at the hives now. So tell us a little bit about these bees. Sure, so a couple years back when the club was ori originally founded by Ellie Symes, who still lives in the Bloomington area, is extremely involved with beekeeping, actually runs her own bee company now. Uh, they invested in these hives to give students an opportunity to learn more about how to keep bees, interact with them, and really just um, add some more honeybees back to the population that's diminishing so greatly. So here at Hilltop Garden, students who join the club have an opportunity to get educated on all things bees and actually get hands-on with them as well. And just for the record, I'm standing right here. There are bees all around us and I'm not getting stung. So I think that they're pretty friendly, but <laughs> I think we're gonna open yep. up the hive now and see what's going on. <laughs> So yeah, you can kind of see like, even if you guys just want to get right here, they're like, they're definitely producing some like honey and stuff. They're right. Let's see if I can get one to land on me. I don't really, again, like I've never really interacted with any of them, but. Right. Can I touch one of them? I'm sure you can. I don't know. I can't promise how they'll react, but. That was pretty brave, I will say. I am very I impressed. It. It was like yeah, then it kind of got in defense mode, but yeah, no, they're, they're pretty relaxed. Like the honeybees really don't sting. Like I think a lot of people think they do. Um, it's really a last resort and they're pretty relaxed, especially if uh, you're like regularly coming to this thing and they kind of know what the deal is. Okay. Yeah, no, they're really interesting. Okay. I mean, we'll, over the course of the year, we'll be working really hard to evaluate how healthy they are. So Hopefully we can take like beeswax, yeah. um, take honey, 
we you know we have some grandiose ideas of like doing fundraisers from just producing like our own honey selling it or oh, yeah, that's maybe awesome. working with like a local business for a day to you know create something with it uh -huh. i think over 200 billion dollars worth of agriculture around the world depend directly on bees wow. so uh it's pretty important they're around and we're losing like i said almost a third of them a year so it's pretty radical um you know how these changes are coming but that's you know why our club is here to hopefully spread awareness and get people in the loop about what's going on and maybe in some small way how they can help out or at least spread a good word around. So that's you know really what we're trying to do. Thank you for tuning in to our first episode of season five. We are so happy to have you join us each week for all the latest on all things Bloomington. Be sure to follow us on all social media at B-Town B-Fast Club. And if you are interested in joining our TBBC team, please contact Amy at amygala at iu.edu. This has been Juliana Mary and Michael Skiles for IUS TV. We'll see you next week, Hoosiers.